Welcome to today's episode of AI for All, where we tackle the big questions about technology, AI, and what it means for the future of humanity. Today's episode dives into what might just be the most important and perhaps slightly unnerving question of our time. How can machines become smarter than humans? This isn't just some sci-fi fantasy anymore. It's real, it's happening, and it's happening fast. In fact, just recently, OpenAI CEO Sam Altman announced that they're aiming for artificial general intelligence, AGI, machines that can perform any intellectual task a human can by 2030. That's right, folks. We're not talking decades down the line anymore. The timeline is accelerating. Let's rewind for a second. The idea of machines surpassing human intelligence has been around for decades. Alan Turing asked, can machines think back in the 1950s? In the 90s, IBM's Deep Blue beat Garry Kasparov at chess, not by thinking, but by using brute force calculations. And then came 2016, when Google DeepMind's AlphaGo beat a World Go champion, not by memorizing moves, but by learning patterns and strategies. That was a turning point. But here's where things get interesting. Fast forward to today, and China's AI startup DeepSeek has unveiled a groundbreaking model called R1. It uses advanced reinforcement learning to rival top American models like OpenAI's ChatGPT. Suddenly, the race for smarter AI is not just about algorithms. It's also geopolitical, with implications for economies, industries, and even global power balances. Meanwhile, AI continues to amaze and, let's be honest, frustrate in equal measure. We've got ChatGPT writing essays, Google planning trips, and stable diffusion generating artwork. Yet for all its brilliance, AI still struggles with basic human things, like understanding sarcasm, or, let's not forget, not suggesting recipes that include dish soap. And let's be honest, Tesla's autopilot is still occasionally trying to turn left into a bush. <laughs> so the question remains, what's missing? Why are machines that seem so smart in some areas so clueless in others? The answer lies in how we teach them. Which brings us to today's big question, the one we're going to answer in this very episode. What does it take for machines to stop being brilliant copycats and start being true innovators? And more importantly, how can they surpass us? On January 28, 2025, Google researchers published a groundbreaking paper that completely clarifies the roadmap to achieving superhuman intelligence. The paper, titled SFT Memorizes, RL Generalizes, a comparative study of foundation model post-training, dives deep into two key methods of teaching AI, supervised fine-tuning, SFT, and reinforcement learning, RL. At first glance, these methods might sound like complicated jargon, but they're actually pretty simple concepts when you break them down. Think of it this way. SFT is like teaching someone step by step do this, then this, then this, and they just follow along. It's kind of like a GPS for your tasks, ensuring nothing gets lost in translation. RL, on the other hand, is more like tossing someone into a pool and saying, figure it out. Oh, and here's a floaty if you do it right. One focuses on rule following, while the other builds adaptability and survival skills. But what do these methods really mean? And why are they so important? Stay with us as we unravel the secrets behind them, uncovering their true significance. Don't worry, we'll break them down into simple, relatable examples that anyone can understand. 
By the end of this episode, you'll see how these methods work and why they're so important for building the next generation of intelligent machines. Let's start with SFT. It's like giving someone a detailed cake recipe and telling them exactly what to do step by step. You say, add one cup of flour, mix in two eggs, pour in milk, then bake for 30 minutes. They don't have to think. They just follow the instructions exactly as written. But here's the problem. What happens if you suddenly swap sugar for honey? Or ask them to bake a pie instead of a cake? They panic. Why? Because they didn't actually learn how to bake. They just memorized that specific recipe. In AI terms, SFT is all about memorization. The model is trained on a large data set of examples, learning to mimic those exact responses. It's incredibly effective when the task stays the same as the training examples. But the moment something changes, like a new rule or a different context, it struggles to adapt. It's like having a student who aces every test as long as the questions are the same, but fails miserably when the teacher throws in a curveball. <laughs> We've all seen that before, right? It's all smooth sailing until something unexpected comes along and throws us off our game. Now, let's talk about RL. It takes a completely different approach. Reinforcement learning, or RL, is like setting up an exciting challenge where an agent learns to make decisions by trial and error, optimizing its actions based on the reward it receives. Imagine saying to someone, here's some flour, eggs, and sugar. Go make a cake. They start experimenting. Maybe they use too much sugar the first time or forget the eggs altogether. But whenever they get closer to a delicious cake, you reward them. Over time, they figure out not just how to make a great cake, but why each ingredient and step matters. So if you suddenly give them a new ingredient, say chocolate, they'll know how to incorporate it and still bake something amazing. In AI terms, RL is all about trial and error and generalization. The model doesn't rely on memorizing specific examples. Instead, it learns by exploring different strategies and adjusting based on feedback. This makes RL incredibly flexible. If the rules or tools change, it can still adapt because it's learned the underlying principles, not just the steps. So, in essence, SFT creates a rule follower. Someone who's brilliant at repeating what they've been taught, but struggles when faced with anything new. RL, on the other hand, creates a problem solver. Someone who learns through trial and error, understands the bigger picture, and can adapt to challenges. Both approaches are powerful in their own way, but as this paper shows, it's RL that unlocks the ability to build truly intelligent machines capable of thriving in unpredictable situations. And this brings us to a fundamental question posed by the researchers. Are these machines genuinely capable of original thought? Or are they just extraordinary at mimicking patterns and pretending to think? Can AI ever truly break free from its programming and achieve human-like or even superhuman reasoning? The researchers conducted two fascinating experiments to put these teaching methods to the test. And trust me, you don't need a PhD or even a lab coat to follow along. These experiments are like puzzles that challenge the very core of what AI can do. So let me walk you through them in a way that's fun and easy to understand. Let's start with the first experiment called General Points. Imagine you're playing a simple card game. You've got four cards on the table, like a five, a four, a 10, and a seven. Your job? Combine these numbers using math to make 24. Sounds easy, right? But here's the twist. Sometimes the face cards, J, Q, and K, are worth 10. In another round, they're worth 11, 12, or 13, 
the rules can change without warning. The big question is, can the AI figure this out? Supervised Fine Tuning, or SFT, is like that one friend who memorizes every card game rule perfectly, but only for the version they know. If you suddenly say, actually, jacks are worth 11 now, they completely freeze and say, wait, that's not how I was taught. SFT does well as long as the rules don't change, but as soon as they do, it struggles. Why? because it memorized the rules instead of understanding the math behind the game. Reinforcement learning, on the other hand, is like your adaptable friend who's always ready for a rule change. You say, Jacks are 11 now, and they shrug and say, cool, I can work with that. RL learns the logic and strategy of the game itself, not just the surface rules. So when the rules change, it can still figure out how to win. In this experiment, the researchers observed that SFT models performed well in rule-consistent scenarios, but completely broke down when the face card values changed. They couldn't generalize the arithmetic reasoning, which means they failed to adapt to the new rules. RL models, on the other hand, excelled. They demonstrated a stronger ability to adapt to the new rules and consistently generated correct solutions, even under rule changes. This highlighted RL's ability to go beyond memorization and build deeper reasoning skills. Now, let's move on to the second experiment, VIRL, short for Vision and Instructions for Real Life. This experiment is designed to test whether AI can navigate a virtual city based on different types of instructions. Imagine you're playing a game where you're dropped into an unfamiliar city and your mission is to find a specific destination, like a park or a coffee shop. In the first scenario, the AI is given absolute directions like turn north and walk two blocks, then turn east. It's like using a compass to get around. But in the second scenario, the AI is given relative directions like turn left, then walk straight. The rules for navigation completely change. The question is, can the AI adapt to these new instructions and still find the destination? Let's talk about SFT. Trained on just one type of instruction, let's say absolute directions, it performs well as long as the instructions follow the same style. But as soon as you switch to relative directions, it's like handing a compass to someone who only knows left and right. It's lost, confused, and often fails to reach the destination. Why? Because SFT only memorized how to handle absolute directions and couldn't generalize to a different style. Now, reinforcement learning takes a completely different approach. Instead of memorizing specific instructions, it focuses on the goal, reaching the destination. It learns by trial and error, figuring out how to adapt regardless of whether the instructions are absolute or relative. When you switch the rules, RL doesn't care. It uses landmarks, patterns, and spatial understanding to navigate effectively. RL models adapted seamlessly to the new instruction style. They consistently found their way to the destination, demonstrating the ability to generalize and focus on the end goal, rather than being limited by the specific format of the instructions. So, why does this matter? Well, it's simple. If AI is ever going to outsmart us, it needs to do more than memorize. It needs to adapt. Reinforcement learning doesn't just teach machines to adapt. It's a pathway to something much bigger. Superhuman intelligence. Think about it this way. In any field, the recipe for machines to become smarter than us is the same. Let them learn through trial and error. By letting machines explore, fail, and improve, 
they can surpass even the brightest human experts in that domain. Let's make it relatable. Imagine we unleash an RL-trained AI in medicine. At first, it tries thousands of ways to model and test treatments for rare diseases. It gets things wrong at first, of course it does, but with every failure, it learns. Eventually, it discovers patterns in medical data no human could see, leading to treatments we could never have imagined. Over time, it doesn't just catch up to human doctors, it surpasses them. Or take weather forecasting. Enthusiastically, a reinforcement-trained AI might start with simple models of wind and pressure. Imagine the possibilities as it refines its predictions with each iteration, learning from past successes and failures. This could revolutionize our understanding of weather patterns and forecasting. By repeatedly testing and refining those models, it could eventually predict hurricanes or droughts weeks before we can today, saving countless lives. Trial and error allows the machine to uncover insights that even the best meteorologists might miss. Even in creative fields, RL could shine. Imagine an AI learning to compose symphonies or design cutting edge architecture, not by being fed examples, but by experimenting with combinations of sounds, shapes, and ideas. Over time, it could innovate in ways that feel uniquely human, perhaps even beyond human. This is the path to artificial general intelligence, AGI, that Sam Altman and others have spoken about. AGI isn't just about machines doing one thing better than us, it's about machines that can adapt and thrive in any field. The roadmap is clear. The more we train machines to think like problem solvers, the more we teach them to try, fail, and improve, the closer we get to AGI. And here's the thing. Unlike humans, machines don't get tired. They don't ask for raises or better benefits, and they can scale incredibly fast. While it might take a human expert years or decades to master a field, an RL-trained AI can iterate and improve at lightning speed, exploring possibilities we might never even consider. This ability to experiment, to fail fast and learn faster, is the game changer. In medicine, in weather forecasting, in creativity, in any imaginable field, Trial and error is the recipe for building machines that aren't just as smart as us, but smarter. And that's why reinforcement learning is such a critical step toward building the future of AI and unlocking the potential of superhuman intelligence. Add to that the fact that machines can work 24-7, adapt at speeds humans simply can't match, and scale effortlessly, and you begin to see why RL isn't just a tool. It's the foundation for creating the kind of intelligence that could change the world. All right, folks, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed diving into the fascinating world of AI and learning about how machines could one day become smarter than us and how reinforcement learning might be the key to unlocking superhuman intelligence. I really don't know if I should be happy or sad about this. Share your thoughts in the comments below.